Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to the Canyon. Welcome back to an installment of the State of the Canyon. It is Friday, the 30th of June, the final State of the Canyon update for the month of June. In the year of our Lord, 2023, uh, the next time we do one of these, it going to be July. And let me tell you what happened between the last one of these and this one. Uh, coursework, I, I, you know what? I almost said zero. No, I trimmed trees for like six hours at one point uh, and, and found out that uh, Palo Verde sap is almost as bad as pine sap when you step on it in your bare feet. And don't cut Palo Verdes in bare feet because they are very spiny and they drop little spiny tips off. And I have one in the bottom of my right foot right now. There's a little angry red dot and it's in there. And 24 hours from now, less than 24 hours from now, I'll be walking around the LA Convention Center with the tip of that spine in my foot with no one to blame but myself. So that was the coursework was I trimmed trees and I knocked down weeds, but uh, like no course building or nothing. I've, uh, I've been building cosplay props pretty much nonstop. Uh, ordinarily I'm not as blue and silver and, and red as stuff because the arts and crafts portion of the program is pretty heavy. Someone, I think Andy Yates in the comments said that they were interested to see what I've been uh, pouring my time into now small small disclaimer here is a one inch poplar dell painted in the colors of a hot dog on a stick because the first weapon and i and i found out the in for the pertinent information from the the future carrier of this weapon i oto from an anime whose name i already forgot uh, uh bears a weapon called the pen mace and I, and I have to carry it sort of uh, gingerly because this is right here and we're doing it again. So here's the tape. So see, I, I'm obsessive. It ha The colors have to match up. So blue has to match there. And then this one is already pinned pin in red. It's under the tape. So I still have green and yellow to do. There, There is the head of the pen mace. We're going to have to go wide to fit more of this in here. Okay. There, there is the pen mace and it has a hand guard which goes over like that because without it it just looks like the kingdom hearts keyblade i think so this goes on like that and then the tip of the pen is this guy and that goes on like that if you're interested in this sort of shenaniganery uh take a look at the uh crawler canyon Instagram, I'm sure I will have posted some, some pictures, uh, uh of, during the weekend. So how did I do, how did I do it? If anyone is at all curious, uh, again, one inch poplar dowel, which inserts about that far. And then there's a three eighths hole drilled in this and a three eighths hole drilled in this. And there's a, a, about a five inch long dowel that pins the two together. Everything is epoxied. I, uh, this is my favorite part of this one. We can go back in tight. There we go. This is my favorite part about this one. These little keyblade pieces. I'm just <laughs> these little keyblade pieces, which is not what this is. Uh, I had a very blurry like screen grab that was about this big, like about the size of a baseball card. And I looked at it and I eyeballed it out and I drew it on a piece of paper with a sharpie. I put it in my scanner, scanned it in the computer took it into the computer, took it into the laser software, just traced it with the line tool. That's why there's no actual smooth lines. I was just using points. And uh, the software that I use doesn't do Bezier, does not do Bezier curves. So it wasn't auto rounding. I thought it might auto round, but it didn't. And I was like, well, I can just sand them down. And then once I cut it, I was like, nope, nope. That's, they, they look absolutely fine. Each one is stack laminated. I buy the cheap Amazon three millimeter basswood. So these are cut. I cut eight of them. Luckily, they only took about eight minutes each to cut. This is a piece of a two by four, which I ripped down to inch and a half by inch and a half. And then you can see I, I sort of haphazardly filled the dado grooves. Like this thing might get used once or twice. So I don't want to build it to like Hollywood level quality. 
poplar end to make the end out here. I think I got the taper fairly decent. And this had to be made into two pieces. I couldn't just turn this down on the lathe because my lathe bed is not big enough to fit this whole thing on it. This was also turned out of a single piece of poplar. It has a one inch hole. It just, well, there's tape on it, but it, it fits up to about there. And then if you have hands that aren't gargantuan hands, when this goes on, uh, it's a perfect two-handed hand guard. It's just hobby foam over an Avion bottle. So there is the pen mace, I Oto's pen mace. It's almost done. I think it came out pretty great. And as I mentioned before, the speed secret to Anime Expo is always bring a weapon because then you have to go to weapon check and that line is shorter. The one that I finished first is not going to fit in frame at all. Uh, it is, this one I know, I know two pertinent things. From an anime titled Chainsaw Man, there's a character who is apparently a demon and their name is Power. And Power has a hammer. So let me, let me swing this around. Here is Power's hammer. Yeah, there we go. Uh, we'll pull back again. Uh, there is Power's hammer. There's a, for size reference, this is a 12 inch quick tube for pouring concrete. It is 20, it is, I have cut it to 24 inches long. This is a, as a inch and a quarter closet rod. Uh, the handle is almost touching the ceiling. This thing just stays within the size limitations for uh, cosplay props for Anime Expo. The ends are made of uh, half inch birch plywood. Those were really fun to get in there, but I mean, if there's something that I can do, it's make it look like something is made out of one piece. We went, oh man, I'm just banging the lights. We went full patina on this one because I didn't like how it just looked red. It was just a Rust-Oleum commercial red. The handle was done with this stuff, with the folk art, well, we're gonna go back. With the folk art multi-surface, I really love this stuff. So I just hand wiped it. And I'm and my paintbrushes are the Tim Tim whites. I just tear them into pieces and I use I use them as paintbrushes and throw them away. So uh, also there's a piece of a two by four which was cut to the radius of this. Then this was inserted through. It was all glued and bolted together. The ends are all glued and pinned and everything. Uh, to me, on some levels, it's crazy what they will allow you to bring in. Like like there's a no metal rule. Like, you're okay with fasteners and stuff, but you can't use, like, metal tubing, metal pipe. You couldn't bring, like, an aluminum bat. But presumably, based on the rules, you could just take a Louisville Slugger. Like, if you wanted to be Negan from The Walking Dead, you could get a Louisville Slugger, wrap it in fake... Get You know how they make those garlands for small Christmas trees with the little stars? Looks enough like barbed wire from a distance. Wrap some of that garland around at the end of that bat and just take it inside. How is that not an actual weapon? I mean, this, this is a cardboard tube. It weighs four pounds, maybe. So we're well within the weight range, but like, here's, here's the end of the handle. Okay, we'll see if we can do this. Here's the end of the handle, ready? Okay, we're still in frame a little bit. Nope, we're out of frame. We're gonna, okay, we're gonna do it again. Ready? Ready, hold still. Okay, here's the handle. Yeah, and this isn't the biggest one that I've ever made. So there's the two that are done. I'm still working on a face mask thing for another Chainsaw Man character, and I don't know if that will be complete. We are, we are into, the, we're past crunch time at this point. And my wife will be going as Sophie from Hell's Moving Castle on one of the days. And I really wanted to get her a cane. The, uh, if, you, if you Google for Sophie's cane, Hell's Moving Castle, it's fantastic. And I want to do it. And I ordered the stuff to do it. And then Amazon was like, we're sorry. That's running late. And it was really the one thing that I needed to not run late. So we don't know if that one will come to be. What I can tell you is here's what's going to happen. Tomorrow... Saturday, that's the first. The first of July is a quick view of the Jetco 
Adventurer. Yes, we're testing the other Jetco. Sunday. Oh, man. That one's going to be fun. We're, we're talking about overrunning. It came from the workbenches. It came from the workbench volume 20 is starting on Sunday. And that one is a member submission. They sent me all the stuff in a giant box. Everything needed to build it, except for the Canyon herbs and spices, which we will provide. Uh, which is like, there's a clear body. So we're going to paint the body. We're going to do some chassis stuff. We're going to do some, we're going to do, we're going to do some stuff. We're going to put the stank on it. And then it's going to go back off to Tennessee. Tennessee. I keep, it is Tennessee. It's Tennessee. I'm, I'm 94% sure that it's Tennessee. That's where it's going back to. Also during the upcoming week, there will be some testing going on. Uh, first and foremost of which is I have heard tell talk and tell that you can use this stuff, the folk art acrylic directly on Lexan. We're going to, we're going to test that out. We're going to try it out. Not on anything substantial. I think we've got that old busted proline body. I think we're going to paint up the outside of it in different patches with different acrylic paints and see what works. Because I have a lot of this, like I have a lot of the multi-surface stuff. I do a lot of this multi-surface. We've also got like the regular, just straight acrylics. I think this is just gray. Yeah, like primer gray. I've got the apple, way. I've got like the apple barrel colors. Uh, I have to do a lot of cosplay prop stuff. I was a Cub Scout dad, I was a Boy Scout dad. So I've got all kinds of acrylic paints, all kinds of paints. We're gonna try all sorts of paints on Lexan. Like, I mean, you can see the bottles that I use for weathering are right over here. Who are these by? Craft Essentials. We're gonna see what sticks. We're gonna see, we're gonna see what sticks. That's gonna be one. And this one hinges on our good friends over at Associated Electrics who finally said you can buy an XF kit and someone mentioned it in the comments, shout out, which I hadn't even thought to go look. And I went and I looked in the comments and mere moments ago, I ordered an XF kit. So I don't know if it will be starting the first week of July. It might fall into the second week, but it will be second Rebirth, the recontinuation of the It Came From the Workbench series from which sprung Blue Sky High. Blue Sky High is going, Blue Sky High is going competitor mode. He's getting a Stealth XF. He's getting, he's getting modded. Now, the dream would be that his current chassis rails work with the skin. I recognize that they probably won't. They probably will not. So he's going to need more rails, which means at some point I have to go to my uh, one of my favorite places to go, but least favorite places to drive K&H Metals in nearby Riverside, California, and get another $75 quarter sheet of aluminum because as of right now, I'm pretty sure I have at least three chassis that I need to cut. Three. So I'm 99% sure I don't have enough aluminum to do that. <laughs> Not on hand. So we've got to cut 19s. We've got to cut 20s. And we're probably going to have to cut re recut Blue Sky Highs. There's other stuff too. There's other stuff too. And I, uh, I already can't remember. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to find an insert that works in this. I don't care if I have to carve it by hand. I don't care if it's made out of stuff that I find at a craft store or stuff that I have to make out of whatever I have on hand. Uh, part of me, what I've really wanted to try but have not gotten up the gumption to do it, I want to assemble myself some cutters. And I want to attempt, I want to, attempt to make a proper faux halo using the reticulated polyethylene and the foam from those anti-fatigue 
floor mats, the ones that look like fake diamond plate, those. I want to see if I can cut the, the rings out of that because it feels to be right around the same density and then use the reticulated polyethylene to make the web wrap for it. I think these need web wraps, but I'm not. Uh, come on, guys. You can't put real web wraps in these. These were $25 for the set of tires. You can't put $60 worth of inserts into $25 worth of tires because that's $85. And you can just go buy these and they'll work great <laughs> for like $50. Or go out and buy these and they'll work great for like $55. So we can't turn Amazon tires into an $85 tire set and be like, well, now they work good because then we're getting too close to the price of not buying clerms and just buying real KLRMs. So that's that. Every Wheel and Wednesday, even uh, those that are taking... I, I'm Every State of the Canyon, even those taking place during absolute... Anime Expo Field Time Crunches have to have wheeling in them. There's always been wheeling in these. Every wheel in Wednesday has wheeling in it. Every state of the canyon has wheeling in it. And uh, we are going to continue that tradition, however brief it might be. It will be nice for me to sit down on a bucket chair. Hopefully there's some shade. It hasn't gotten... It's hotter. It's, it's significantly warmer in here than it is outside. So it will be nice to go outside and put on my hat and sit on my bucket chair and ramble a little bit more out in the daylight. And you'll get to see what I've done. What what hath I wrought? Let's just put it this way. Uh, five second spoiler alert, because you're going to see this in five seconds your time. Uh, it's not orange anymore. Let's just say that I wish that I had the time to put some sort of appropriately dramatic unveiling music for this because I think this thing looks amazing but I don't I'm a, I'm supposed to be doing other stuff right now oh yeah getting those cobwebs but I mean this guy this guy right here let's uh let's, let's do this I mean how good is that that, in my estimation, looks amazing. Uh, it makes me wish the shocks weren't so shiny, but uh, that's that's really my only complaint, and there's there's not a lot I can do about that. When uh, fully disassembled it, learned that we've got those little top-mounted uh, windshield wipers. I, I could not get those off. Uh, they super glued them on. So there's like a bracket on the inside, and they super glued them to the bracket. And I put, you know, Bob Smith Industries debonder, uncure on them, and uh, it tr trickled through. And you know what it'll do? It'll eat the paint right off Lexan. Not well, but it will mess that paint up. So at that point, I was like, well, you're a hundred, you are a hundred percent committed now. So, so that's where we are. I don't think I went, I don't think I went too far. And uh, somebody was like, you need to find a, figure out a way to make it uh, squeaky. And I was like, I just won't lube the drive shaft. And uh, yeah, we're already there. It is, it is squeaky. There's that squeak. Boy, that is a lot of spider webs. It is, it is alarmingly capable for something that by, by Canyon standards is basically a scaler. The wheelbase is so long and it is, <laughs> whenever you hand this thing to anyone, uh, when, when, they <laughs> when they take it into their hands, they go, oh my, uh, it, is, it is heavy. Yeah, those tires look so good on there. A little less. Okay, we'll try it this way. This is a little more of a risky approach here. Oh, that's good. It's just so pretty. No regrets. I mean, it's drivetrain wise, 
this thing is this thing has got some noises it's got a real mid-band clickiness to it that i don't know i don't know what that's from but there's there's a shaft in there of of some sort that just doesn't like the rest of its friends so at a at about mid throttle so in that like maybe two two and a half miles an hour oh it's so clickety a little surgy at low end but there are things that make us forget so I was I was both right and wrong. The turning that turning sickle is not bad for how long this thing is. I was both right and wrong. It's it's nice. I I have not gotten to sit down on a bucket chair and drive in a, in a little in a minute. But it is oh man the temp, the forecast is good. Yeah, 98 is the forecast for today. And even when the air temperature isn't that hot yet, oh the sun. The sun is roasting right now. There's something about this guy. Like, it, it, it isn't explicitly necessary that you drive it really slow. Like, the, the tire does reasonably well at different throttle inputs. There's just something about him that is like, you're like, yeah, I just want to, I want to cruise it slow. There's a giant red ant crawling up my left leg right now. And I say that he's giant because I can feel him walking. You shouldn't be able to feel an ant walking. Yeah, that surge. Oh, listen to that click. Yeah, there's just something. There's something about the nature of that, uh, the the relationship between the gearbox and the transfer case. It's not the. It is not the smoothest thing. We're gonna we're gonna try to go around this section here safely, and then uh, we we got to go sit in the shade here. I just I just missed it on the transition. The the peacocks were hollering, and I can't remember the last time I heard the peacocks. Before we went full suburbia, and we are kind of on a the the canyon exists on a little about. 10 acre plot of non-suburbia inside suburbia. We still get our electricity from a telephone pole, you know, that type of thing, which is not, for those not in the know, that's not common here in suburban Southern California. Most everybody gets their power from under the ground. So we still have telephone poles. The phone line, which isn't hooked up to anything anymore, comes in off of a pole. And we are on what was formerly one acre. They took the front, about 12 foot of our property away to widen the street and put in a sidewalk. So we're now on 0.89 acres. And they're just like, yeah, enjoy. But it, uh, it doesn't matter because here's the fun thing. When they talk about property value, property value doesn't care how big your property is. They're, they're only looking at the improvements. So they only look at the structure. So all of these houses, so there's, imagine, uh, here's me. And then there's a, a house here and then a house next to that. And then there's one more house this way. So there's four acres and then there's four houses back. So there's eight. And then just off to the, the, the grid of eight, there's one over here and then there's one over there. So it's about, it's about 10 acres. And the acres this in this section are all aligned together. So acre, 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 acre. And so there's eight and they're long plots. And then the ones out on the street by the post office, the plots run long, but they run this way. So, so actually it might be closer to 11 acres, which nowadays would fit 70 houses. I think they've gone higher than that now. Uh, on some of the town homes around here, they're putting nine per acre, which is insane. I mean, I think about when I'm on a quarter of an acre for, for this, the canyon exists on about a quarter of an acre. And I cannot imagine two houses back, like they'd be right next to each other. They'd be on top of each other. So uh, this is a place that exists, I, I guess purely because old folk didn't wanna sell their properties when the big developers come in and just started building houses by the hundreds. And luckily, Luckily, I have mentioned this to, to friends and family in the past. We're in a good situation because where we are, there's us, there's the 11, 
Then across the street is a subdivision that was built in about 1989. And behind us is the flood basin, the, the river channel. So they can't, and then just to this side on the other side of the street is the United States post office. So they can't build anything. Oh, very slow. Uh, they can't build anything else again uh, around us. Oh, and uh, across the street from the post office, the elementary school and right next to that, the middle school. So there are rules about what you can build near elementary schools middle schools, post offices. So we don't have to worry about like, there's not, we're, we're not gonna get urban sprawl and there's not gonna be a gas station next door, which is great because there are a lot of parts in this town where the way this town was built, I, I now use that, imagine my other hand, town. Uh, the way it was built, we've got urban sprawl so bad, so bad. I could show you, I could go and take a picture and show you a picture of a house. There's, there's a, there's a house there's a cedar fence and there's a Valero gas station. And, uh, and oh, and directly across the street from that house, a McDonald's. Like, you know, when that house was built, it was like a two lane road that might've been dirt. And now we fast forward to the future and they live across the street from a McDonald's. No, thank you. Oh, there's also, and then about 200 yards to their west, a freeway which was absolutely, that freeway wasn't there 30 years ago. So it definitely wasn't there when that house was built. So we're very fortunate to be located where we are. We were rezoned, this used to be a, like where, if you, if you can think over my shoulder, back over there to where Savage Lands and Sultan's Curse is, that's where the horse corrals used to be. When we, when we got the property, there were still horse corrals there. And we took them down and we went on like, close five or offer up or one of those and said horse fence and literally two guys with a trailer that was way too small because those horse fence pieces were like 24 feet long. They were just piled over here in the corner of the yard and I'm pointing over there. They were piled over there where deadline is for like six months. And uh, we were like free horse fence. And literally somebody was here within 30 minutes and they put those pieces of horse fence on a trailer about big enough for an MG midget or a Bobcat, like an eight foot trailer, and then just drove off. And I was like, holy crap. But you know, uh, it, it was one of the few instances in my life with the positive, with the positive power of the internet, where you invite strangers to come to your house and uh, nobody got stabbed. It was nice. They, they got their free horse fence and they went and I didn't have to have a horse fence uh, here's a here's a funny uh, anecdote that relates to the horse fence that my buddy Bandicoot will not appreciate. Uh, when we were taking it down, uh, part of the horse fence had an awning over the top of it, a, a corrugated steel awning on the top. And uh, my kids were out there, and they were very small at that time. They were maybe three and five, I want to say. And we pulled one of the corner things off, and the, the, the horse awning was like that and it just pivoted on its mid axis like that and he was standing under it and my kids were right in front of me and that thing that enables mothers to lift cars off their children as soon as I saw that thing start to move I grabbed those two children and pulled them back as fast as I could and I yelled look out or watch out or something like that. And my buddy turned to me to be like, huh? And that awning hit him right in the head. And it was made out of like this size fence post, but like the thick wall, the high dom tubing. And he took it, he's got a scar on his forehead where he took that thing right in the head. And he still, and I bring it up because he still brings it up. Both of my kids are old enough to drive now. One of them is almost old enough to drink, and he still mentions, hey, remember when you hit me in the head with that uh, awning on the horse fence? And I was like, I, I yelled, look out. But honestly, I, it, <laughs> I was, I was going to save my children, so. Ooh. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, you, you, see the, you see the pipe? 
that's your anti flipper over and and you know what in in all honesty i mean you all know as well as i do that that i've got work to do i think did, I, I think i got the mirror caught on the uh snorkel the accessories on this body are quite durable it's, it's really nice. And look, the mirrors are mirrory. You can see how shiny that is. You can actually, wow, I can actually see in that mirror. Crazy. Um, I want to thank you all for stopping by. I want to thank you all for uh, supporting the canyon. Uh, even, even if just emotionally. No! I have to say, I've never lost traction because I got into too deep of flowers before. That's, that's a new one. Oh yeah, now the, the real chirp. I don't even need to throw any sand on there. It's just gonna get really chirpy. Can we pull? Oh yeah. These might, these might, these are not the perfect tire, but these might be the perfect tire for this rig. I mean, look how good they look. And those wheels might not be the perfect tire, but they might be. Those hot storms are great. I love the look of this thing. I love it. I was in the outro, wasn't I? Oh man, yeah. I still got painting. I still got that mask to finish. I've got to pack my little, I use one of those cross body bags that I overpack with all the stuff that we might need. My brain is preparing itself. Like I've already readied myself for how much traffic I'm gonna be in. I've readied myself for buying $7.50 bottled waters that come in aluminum bottles because they don't do plastic bottles. I don't I don't know, man. This is California, baby. We're we're so laid back that all we want are more rules. Like apparently that's that's how that works. Water in aluminum bottles. Uh it, the the cost of this. This is a this is a this this turns into a $1000 weekend between the gas, the food, like each meal a meal for three people is sixty to seventy dollars, and we are we are trapped in there because once you're inside the convention center, it's got you till you leave. Parking is going to be forty dollars a day. Oh my goodness, I have to I got to get in a real zen place, and I've got stuff that needs to be done. And oh, I am looking forward to the third of July. I am looking forward to the fourth of July. No, let's let's go further. I'm looking forward to the 5th of July when the barbecues are done and Anime Expo is done and I can go back to quietly tinkering on toy cars in my workshop and coming out here at hours like this time is probably still okay for the next couple of weeks, but it's going to get to where the sun is going to be a lot closer to the horizon that way or closer to the horizon that way before you see me outside so i look forward to seeing you then i am gonna i am gonna get my assigned duties completed we're gonna we're gonna drive this guy out and we're gonna see you in the next one because we, we know we know we know you'll come back and uh, we thank you for watching we please do invite you to comment below someone in the comments mentioned that the algorithm looks for comments so please do comment below and please, please do, if not just for the algorithm from the hashtag from the comments is one of my favorite things to do because you guys give me ideas that I never would have had like drilling foams or trying this insert or the holds that ended up on the ghost rover. Never would have thought to try it. You guys, you guys are helping me out and I hope that I'm helping you out and we're going to go through this tunnel. We're going to bid you adieu. We're going to ask that you wish me uh, nothing but luck. Uh, on my feet for all those hours in the convention center. I hope that while I'm there, you're all doing something that you uh, enjoy. Uh, you're, you're keeping cool and that you're doing your very best to have a good one. And we will see you next time. And look at that. Almost, yeah, I had to pause a lot, but we almost, we almost outroed that.